Hallelujah. Come on, let's raise a hallelujah, church. Good morning, good morning. Listen again, thanks for allowing us to come into your homes and worship with you. We know right where you're sitting is right where the Lord is. Amen. Amen. Listen, turn to your, your husband and your wife this morning. Instead of shaking them today, give them a big hug right now, right off the bat. Give them a big hug. Amen. Listen, I was thinking about a scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, that says, Give thanks in all circumstances. In all circumstances, give thanks. How many of us know right now is a perfect time for us to give thanks? This is a great circumstance this morning for us to give thanks to the Lord. And, and the rest of the scripture says, for this is God's will for you. This is God's will for you. For you to do what? To give thanks in this circumstance in Christ Jesus. So will you do this with me right now? Just turn to your husband, your wife, your kids, your, your, your friend, your brother, your sister, whoever it is that you're sitting with. If you're with nobody, just say it out loud to, to your neighborhood. Just speak it out in the air. Just say this. I choose to give thanks this morning. Come on, just tell them. I choose to give thanks this morning. Come on, that's, that's God's will for you. Amen. Amen. I want to say good morning to all of you. I just want to say we miss being with you here live, but we do know that God is with us here as he is with you there. And whatever it is you're going through today, just know God is good. And I was reading something about God's goodness, and I just wanted to encourage you with it. It's, I don't even know who wrote this. But um, in, sometimes, in hard times, sometimes we hear people say God is good, and we might think, well, how can you say God is good? Look what everything that's going on right now. But the goodness of God doesn't depend on you know, things going right all the time. It says God's goodness is not dependent on an outcome or an emotion. God is not good because we can avoid danger. God is good because when the storms of life hit, he comes closer to us than the storm ever could. He holds us in his loving arms and he doesn't change and he doesn't falter and he does not quit. He doesn't leave either. And no matter what, he never lets go. So no matter what we see or hear, that's going on around us in the world, just know that God is still good because he is good, not depending on our circumstances. So I just wanna pray for all of you today as we're gathering together in our homes. So Father God, I just pray, Lord, that your loving kindness and your goodness would overwhelm all of us, Lord God, that we would sense your goodness because you are good and you are a good God. Lord, I pray, pray that your blessings would be upon each and every person that's watching, each and every person that's listening, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be tangibly felt inside their homes, Lord, just like you were with the children of Israel. Lord, let them feel your presence and your love and your goodness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on now, in your place, wherever you're at, that is your sanctuary, okay? Just picture this, the presence of God filling your room as we begin to worship him. Right now is the time just to allow the Holy Spirit to deal with your heart. Allow him to break down walls. Allow him to, to begin to move your mind in whatever, whatever it is that's bombarding you. Begin to move that away and allow him to deposit the things that he has for you this morning. Will you worship with us? Will you engage with us? Will you experience the presence of God with us? He's there right there in your living room with you. Amen. Let's worship.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here. Never stop, you never 
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. Stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, and even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. Oh, you are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness.
keep singing that, Daniel. Just keep flowing with that. Here's for you. Oh, God is for you. Here's for you. For your healing. For your family. beginning to pronounce his blessing upon this church. Come on, right where you're at, just begin to sing to the Lord, to sing a new song to him. He's for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. says, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. So, Lord, we lift up our praise to you. We magnify you, and we give you the glory that you deserve this morning. We exalt you as king over all this earth. Jesus, Messiah. Jesus, our Savior. The one who is who was, who is, and is to come. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we glorify you. We, we praise you with high praise on our lips. Coming from deep within, we sing it out to you this morning. Songs of magnification, songs of glory, songs of deliverance. We speak, God, Lord, from our hearts and sing from our hearts to you this morning. We want to say we love you. And in this circumstance, we will give thanks because you're God and you're on the throne. Jesus, you're on the throne. And, we, and you deserve our praise and we want to give it to you this morning. You know, I was remembering a story about King Jehoshaphat. King Jehoshaphat, you know, the, the Moabites and the, and the Amorites were, I think it was the Ammonites, who were up all around and, 
and, and he did something. He chose to do something very unorthodox. And that was to send Judah in the battle to sing, to, to sing praises to him. And in the, in the singing and in the praises and the, the magnifying, the magnifying of, the, of God's name, of, of the Lord's name, something interesting happened. The enemy turned on himself. God began to rout the enemy as the enemy turned on himself. And, and God's hand began to move in a whole different way. And, and it just shocked, I believe, those around him. I think even the people were surprised to see how God was moving. But this is, this is something I'm getting from this story. When you're obedient and you hear the voice of the Lord, something happens. When you act and when you move, it moves Him. It moves Him. It moves God. See, your faith right now, I believe this, God is, is allowing circumstances around you to press you, to, to, to put you in a, a difficult situation. And right now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to choose to worship Him, choose to praise Him, choose to magnify Him, and God will begin to rout your enemy, whatever it is. I see that for you this morning. Will you trust Him? Will you obey Him? Will you do what He's asking you to do? Is we just, just magnify Him. And I see this. It's God's hand beginning to move with blessing and favor upon your life. Blessing and favor. As He begins to stretch out His hand, towards you as he begins to walk you through whatever situation uh, it's just the, the different stories are, are just coming to me right now as Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were in the fiery furnace they did not burn, you will not burn as the children of Israel were standing on the edge and, and the waters were raging before them and the enemy was pressing behind them God made a way and he what? He parted the sea and they walked across on dry land Listen, if ever in the history for this generation we need to trust God, it's right now. Right now, Lord, we call upon you. Come on, will you help me pray? Lord, we call upon you. God, bless America. God, bless the United States of America. We're calling on for the hand of God to once again deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. God, we are, we're seeing you right now for who you are. You are omnipotent. You're all powerful. All you possess, God, is in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we speak that name, things begin to happen. The, the way begins to, to, to part, Lord. The, the sea parts, and you make a way for us, God. Thank you. Thank you for demonstrating your power once again on behalf of your people. Listen, right now, more than ever, begin to call out to him. Call upon his name. Begin to speak the name of Jesus. Begin to, in your heart, believe. Believe that He is your Savior. He's your Messiah. He's your Deliverer. He's your God. It's a personal thing. You can receive the blessings of God this morning right where you're sitting. I believe as we continue to move forward into this season, this pressing time, God is speaking to me to pronounce the blessing of God upon you. And I'm going to ask you this. Will you begin to do that over your family? Will you begin to to pronounce the blessing, go to number 6, 24 through 26. Number 6, 24 through 26. Begin to pronounce the blessing over your wife, over your kids, over your household. Pronounce it over your community and speak it over the nation. As we begin to trust God, as we begin to give everything over to Him, this is the season we're in. We're surrendering to you, Lord. Whatever it is that you have for us, God, we yield to your ways. We yield to your will. God, will you do your work in us? And listen, as we pronounce that blessing, I'm believing this. God will reverse the curse upon our land. Be humble. Be prayerful. Will you seek God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? And as you begin to do that, God is going to begin to pour out his favor once again upon our land. I'm believing for a, a routing of the enemy. I'm, I'm telling you, what God is setting up for us, we, we just have to look with the eyes of the Spirit right now, but what He's setting up for us is He's setting up victory for Himself. If you can see that with the eyes of the Spirit this morning, He's setting up victory for Himself. Let's just find His way. Let's find His will, and let's begin to walk in that. 
Will you, will you play your part? Will you fast? Will you pray? Will you seek God? Will you be available to your family, to your friends, to your community? Will you begin to ask the Lord, what is my part? How can I help you, Lord? What is it that you want to do through my life right now? Listen, if it's just sitting at home and praying, pray. If it's getting, again, closer to him and, and, and discovering who he is in his word, get into his word. Don't neglect this time. It's an isolated time for you to get into the will of God. One more time, let's just begin to, to ask him, Lord, will you use me? Will you use me how you want to use me, God? Will you make my, my heart ready? Will you prepare me for what the next step is, God? Lord, I pray for boldness and courage and strength to arise in your church. Lord, let the church, the universal body of Christ, arise with strength and courage in, them, in themselves, Lord. But Lord, knowing that it, there's, that comes from you. And see, God, what, what I'm seeing is that you come and do a deep work in us as we trust in you and you empower us to do your work. And Father, I pray that for our, our people this morning. I pray they find courage and strength in you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you give your family another hug and a high five? And, and uh, probably you'll have to wash your hands after that, but that's okay. We're, we're all in the same household. We're all living together in that space, and I'm sure you're protected. Keep praying for our nation. Don't stop praying. Keep, keep it before you every single day, every hour. Pray without ceasing. This is the time that we need to pray. Listen, we're not out of the neck of the woods yet. A couple more weeks, I'm believing we're going to start to see numbers grow. But fear not. Fear not. Don't fear. Put your faith and trust in him. Faith and trust in him. And he's going to lower that curve. I'm believing that with all my heart. So where you're at this morning, we want to say thank you for joining us in this time of praise and worship. Uh, we want to remind you uh, to continue to give with your tithes and offerings. You can go online and you can go to nhfcselma.com. And in the top corner of the screen, you're going to see a giving a little title there. Push that button and the giving screen will pop up. Go ahead and enter in your information there. And uh, you can make whatever donations or whatever tithes and offerings you have. You can also use the Givelify app. The Givelify app, uh, you can put it on your phone. Go to the, um, uh, I, what's it called, iTunes or uh, the Apple Store. Or you can go to Google Play and you can get the app, Give, Givelify app. And you, you will have to create a, a little, um, uh, what's that called, an ID, uh, a profile. And go in there and you can add your donations that way. Or also you can send them to the church at 2220 Hicks Street. 2220 Hicks Street in Selma, California. And we're trusting God to, to bless you through this difficult time. Some of you may have had hours cut back. We believe God is going to provide for you all of your needs. Will you let us know if you're having a struggle out there? Let us know and we'll be prayerful about it, but also we, we need to be practical about it too, we understand. So, so let us know, call the church, 559-896-6643, 559-896-6643. You got to let us know because we, we, we can't read your minds and we're not sure how you're doing if you're struggling out there. But please let us know. And again, we'll be prayerful and ask the Lord how we could help you. Just open up your hearts during the season to those around you. Be used by God and ask him again, what is your part to play during this crisis? God has you in the right place at the right time for the right reason. You're a blessing. You're blessed to be a blessing. Let's pray over the offering real quick. Thank you, Father for this time that we can give to you to further your kingdom. God, as you touch the hearts of your people, Lord, may they be generous, God, to further your kingdom through their tithes and offerings. And Lord, I pray that as they go through their week, they'll find provision, Lord. You're gonna provide all of their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for meeting everybody's need. Jehovah Jireh is your provider, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right where you're sitting. He's with you. You're in his presence this morning. You're not too far from us because we're with you in spirit, united together in Jesus' name. Now, a couple more things before we transition. I want to give a, an announcement. How many of you know Easter's coming up? That's next week. Easter's coming up. It's coming up pretty fast. Um, so we're not going to be able to gather together right here in the sanctuary. We're going to meet just like we're meeting here. You're going to be in your living rooms. Uh, we're going to be here bringing the service to you um, right where you're at. But we're going to do something um, from, from here to you. 
Uh, and we need you to participate, though. So will you begin to make preparations this week? If you can go to the store or send somebody to the store and get some grape juice, get some crackers, get some bread, we're going to take communion in an unconventional way, right where you're sitting. And from here, we're going to lead you and your family in communion. And uh, it's exciting to me that we have this form of media that we can continue to, to take communion and remember the Lord. It's Resurrection Sunday next week. Resurrection Sunday. I'm excited that we can still participate and be the church in this, in this atmosphere, in this type of uh, meeting. And, and, and please, will you do something? Will you not be discouraged? Will you not be discouraged? I know we want to be together. I know we want to enjoy each other's company. But will you stay in faith and stay lifted up and let the Spirit of God strengthen you with joy? Find something to be joyful about. And and I'm going to do this. I'm going to find the reason for the season that we're in where we have to be at home during this resurrection celebration. And for me, it's, it's something special. We get to be with family together in our homes. A lot of us run around on Easter. We do a lot of crazy things just to to be busy with family. But for some reason, this Easter, the Lord has us in. And it's not by chance. I'm I'm telling you, the Lord's speaking to me, reminding me of the Passover season that we're in. I believe it's going to be a special time. So tune in next week and hear that message we want to bring to you. God is doing something special in our midst in this season with family. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Will you get your Bibles, get ready, get your coffee, get your pastry. We're about to open up the Word of God. Amen. Turn to Matthew 17. Matthew 17. We're going to read a little portion of Scripture here about Jesus and His transfiguration up on the mountain. Uh, Before we do that, I just want to say thanks again for your generosity and your tithes and your offerings. Um, We're still a vital part of this community. We're we're giving beyond our four walls to different ministries that are out and about and doing some things, feeding the homeless, uh, feeding families in need. Um, We do have uh, a ministry within uh, our house right now that we're actually helping families in need. So if you do have some practical needs with food, will you let us know? Call the office, 559 896-6643, that's 896-6643, all right, so just dial in, let us know, again, we only know if you let us know, and we we have our leadership that's that's out there reaching out to you as well, so again, if you share your heart and let them know your need, we'll be willing to help you as much as we can in this time, in this season. Again, you're in Matthew chapter 17, Matthew 17, today is Palm Sunday, and I'm doing a little unorthodox approach to uh, a message leading us into what we call Passion Week. Uh, this is Passion Week leading to, uh, again, the story and the word about Jesus, about Jesus on his way to the cross. Many of you watch uh, The Passion during this time of year. Uh, sit with your families. It's probably not too much for little kids, not suitable for their eyes, but just with the violence. But you can carry that message to them just in for their level, however they can understand it. But some of you adults, you may just want to sit down and watch The Passion with your family. You're going to be home anyway. Get into the Word, read about the story, watch the movie, go back and talk about it and just discuss what was right, what was accurate, what was not, and and just have a discussion about The Passion and Jesus leading into His last days and dying on the cross. I like in that movie that it doesn't only leave it there where He is uh, dead on the cross, but he goes into the grave and he ri- rose from the dead. And so I like how they captured that. But one of the things that I was thinking about just leading into today and, and how, how we all have experiences. We have experiences growing up as children. And I'm just so thankful for my dad and mom that they actually allowed us to do different things when we were younger. Now, I'm closer to my brother in age. We're about, about 14 months apart. People used to think we were twins. If you know my brother, Jesse, uh, he, he's, a, he's a bigger brother. He's a big brother. You know, I mean, he, he takes credit for how I turned out. That's the kind of brother he is. So uh, many of you might be watching some of the news channels right now. There's two brothers. Uh, one's a reporter. One's a governor. And, and it's really cool to watch their interaction. And they're just on each other all the time. Now, that was my brother and I when we were little. We were always on each other. And we were always daring each other. And always in each other's business. And we would fight, but then we would hug each other, and, and we'd hug it out. And, and if you were the other guy trying to pick on little brother, my brother would step in, right? He would step in and defend little brother. Same thing with me. I remember uh, one time my brother got in a fight, and, uh, and, and I, I 
thought I was going to rescue my brother, and I stepped in, and, and I'm the one that got in trouble, you know. And so it was interesting to see how our experiences as, as children, we remember. We remember those things. I remember one particular day my brother was sick, and my parents, again, created these experiences for us, and they took us camping, they took us to the beach, they took us on vacation, and, and we just had a great time as a family. Uh, we used to love, love to go camping in the summertime, and how many of you know sometimes in the summer, even uh, there's uh, summer storms up in the mountains, and this particular summer, we were up in the mountains, and, and it started to rain, and it started to rain really, really hard thunderstorm. I mean, if you're ever in the Sierras and you hear a thunderstorm, it's really, really, really loud. You have one of the greatest light shows um, that you could ever, ever see in the sky. And so it was, it was cold. It was cool, I should say. It was not freezing cold, but it was cool. So we had sweaters and jackets, and we had a big, big fire. It was a big fire. And, um, and all of a sudden, it started to rain. And that fire was so big, it, the rain didn't put out the fire, but it started slowly to to bring down the flames. But my brother was sick and he had a really bad earache and he was just miserable. And we were up in the mountains and sometimes I think elevation plays on that as well. But he was not feeling good. So it was too difficult to tear down the camp and to make down, you know, come down the mountain. It was raining and storming, it was really bad. So my brother had to endure this, this earache. Well, we, one of our uncles, uh, he's, a, he's a cousin, but we call him uncle. You know, us Hispanics and Latinos we call uh, cousin Steels, the, the older. So my deal Billy, so if you're watching deal Billy, hello, God bless you. I'm going to tell a story about you praying on the mountain. So this story is about my, my deal Billy, my Uncle Bill, praying on the mountain for my brother. So there's the storm raging around us, right? And it's going crazy, lights, and then the fire again. It was a big fire, now it started to dwindle. And there was, a, there was a moment as a little boy, I remember this, as a little boy, I'm, I'm just watching and I'm concerned for my brother and my, my dad and mom, and, and they're praying, and they're, you know, we pray violent prayers sometimes over our kids when they're in big need, right? We, we get down to business in our prayer. And so there they were, they were praying, and I remember my Uncle Bill, he used to pray really, really uh, just powerful prayers. And at the end of his prayer, he said, Lord, give us a sign, show us a sign that you have heard us. And all of a sudden, there was thunder and, and lightning, and then the fire. Now, get this. It's raining. The fire shot up, this big flame. I mean, we were just, like, going crazy. I mean, it was a, a, it was a miracle. It was a true miracle and a sign that God was really answering his prayer. And, and I don't know the outcome. I'm, I'm believing that my brother, because I was little, but I'm believing my brother was healed. I'm believing that he was fine after. I'll have to check in with my dad and mom about that outcome. But something about the story, it made an impact on my life. And that was the request from the prayer of, of my uncle and God's response to that prayer. And how, how it, it was just, maybe it was just kind of a spontaneous ask. It was just coming from within him. Lord, show us a sign. Show us something that you, you're real. Show us something that you've heard us. And all of a sudden, God manifests this sign right there in our midst. That's a story that I remember, an experience that I'll never forget. And as I began to read through uh, Matthew and, and, and get to this point in the scripture, I started thinking about the many times Jesus had opportunities to minister on mountains. And we just finished a, a study uh, all of last year in our house-to-house -house groups um, over the Beatitudes. And, and that Sermon on the Mount was a real sermon to connect people, and Jesus was connecting them to how to live life in his kingdom. And, and here is, a, a, I would say, a teaching going forth. It was a teaching to, to uh, a good crowd, a good-sized crowd, and then, you know, you'd have instances of Jesus just traveling around. So he'd go from the mountains to the valleys, and he would, you know, gather crowds and big crowds, and he would feed the crowds, and they would sit on the hills. And so all of these images were popping into my head about how Jesus kind of navigated through his ministry, and he ministered to certain sizes and groups of people. Now, you know that he called 12 people, 12 men, to walk with him, to journey with him, and he was pouring his life and his ministry out in them around them and through them. And, and I started thinking about this, this season right here in, in Jesus' ministry as we get to Matthew 17. 
So here, here it is, they're traveling around, and, and in fact, I'm just going to jump back a little bit just to give you a little context. Um, and so Jesus encounters, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and how they're living, and they're really not living, um, you know, right before God. And then, and then he gets to Peter, and, and this is where Peter confesses, confesses Jesus, that Jesus is the Messiah, and Jesus really praises Peter for it. And then Jesus goes into a time where he's predicting his death, and and thank God for Peter. Remember a lot of times whenever I share here at the church, I'm thankful for Peter because I think he's a lot like us. He gets his foot in his mouth a lot of times. And, 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 I, and he tries. Peter tries. And, and I started looking at my life, and I, and I can consider you and, and where I talk in conversation with you. And I hear certain themes coming all the time from, from our lives, from you. And, you know, we're trying really hard. And where we're trying to live life and we're trying to move forward in, in things. And, and sometimes we just fail. We just fall down. And, and I don't think a lot of times we really anticipate that. You know, we just do our best and then all of a sudden we get blindsided by a circumstance and it takes us out. We feel really bad. We feel maybe overcome. We feel just down and out. We feel like, man, our life is even over. And that's how I saw Peter. And, and even in the... Even in the, the gesture, you know, to, to help Jesus, he was always messing up. You know, just in this instance, when, when Jesus was telling him he was going to be, and he was going to die, and, and Peter took Jesus aside, and this is going up to uh, chapter 16, verse 22, and uh, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, never, Lord, never, Lord. And, and he said, this shall never happen to you. And as I was capturing, again, Peter's words and listening, and, and I, that word never means um, to be gracious to you. And we're in a season of praying this blessing, and so that captured my, my attention. You know, you know, God, never, you're never. No, 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 don't, we don't, I don't want you to go through that. I don't want you to experience that. But I started thinking, what was Peter really keeping God from, from doing? If he would have intervened and he would have stopped, and again, there's nothing stopping God's plan. We know that. But let's just say that, you know, he did. Then, then there would never be any grace extended to us. And so there was a bigger picture that Peter failed to see right here. This shall never happen to you. And what did Jesus tell Peter? Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. And, and I was going a little bit deeper into this for my own life and, and, again, just considering the people that God has me around. And so many times we try to help God out. We try to help him out, and we, we get in the way, and we could be a stumbling block to his plan. And I, I'm really considering this whole season that we're in and how we're living and what's going on around us and what is God doing. What's God doing right here with New Hope Family Church? What's God doing with you? What's he doing with your family? What's he doing in your work environment? Man, there are so many, there are so many people right now that are afraid. So many people that are walking in fear. People are losing hope because they're losing their jobs. People don't have any money. They don't have any food. They, they're, it's just a trying time. And, and I see the bigger picture right now. God is, is allowing us to see that his hand is really upon us. And, and I'm, I'm thinking about experiences, experiences. Why are you experiencing what you're experiencing? Why are you going through the pain that you're going through? Why are you going through the lack that you're going through? Why are you feeling down and anxious and worried? As we consider all of those experiences, personal experiences that we're going through, I want to say this, deep from within, deep from within, there is a longing for us to look up to him right now. There's a longing to look outside of our circumstance and to get our eyes on him. I think Jesus is, is understanding everything that we're going through. We've talked about that before. He's understanding all of the emotions, all of the feelings, everything, but he sees the bigger picture. He sees the bigger picture for our lives. And then that's what we fail to see. And see, we're trying to help him. We're trying to get out in front of him, but we're missing the bigger picture here. So let's jump into Matthew 17 really quick. I want to go there, get through this, and I hope you're encouraged as we, as we uh, gather around God's word this morning. 
Let me pray first. Father, I pray you guide this talk. Lord, guide this message. May it communicate to the hearts of your children. Lord, use this to motivate us, Lord, to keep living for you in times of crisis, to look to you in the season that we call the Easter season. Lord, we call it in the church Resurrection Sunday, this resurrection season. God, get our eyes off of our circumstances and allow us to see the bigger picture of what you're doing in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, all right, amen, amen. So verse one, chapter 17, after six days, Jesus took him, took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. Now let's pause right there. Remember, Jesus had different groups of people throughout his ministry, but in this time, he only took these three with him. He took Peter, James, and John. And he led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now, I don't know what you've heard about this passage and how you, you've, you've uh, taken this and applied it into your own life. And there's a lot of different directions that we can go with this. There's a lot of theology right here packed in this small passage. So I'm not going to focus a lot on, uh, on um, some of these things that we can draw out. But, but will you listen again with ears to hear and, and open your heart so you can receive something from the Lord as he guides us through the season that we're living in. But there was, it's not really stated there, but, but when Jesus, it says, Jesus then... There appeared before um, them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. They're talking with him. And so I was thinking about it playing out in real life and how it would look. And Jesus is having a conversation. And, and it's just like you, you've been in those conversations with, with another adult and your kid comes up. Mom, 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 mom. Something like that. You ever been there, right? You know, dad, 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 dad. And what do you do? You know, you're, you're t- okay, finally, you know, you turn to your kid, right? In fact, one of... Um, the teachings that my wife and I, we, we incorporated in our parent, um, per, parenting skills and developed was uh, growing kids God's way. And so we teach our kids not to interrupt us. We teach our kids that when we're talking to another adult, that they come and they place their hand on us. And then we'll, as parents, we take our hand and we place our hand on their hand. And we are acknowledging them that we, we hear them, we, we sense them, and we're going to turn our attention to them, but we're engaging in another conversation. So it, it's prevented the mom, 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 dad, 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 dad things, and then they feel, what, comforted, and they know we're listening. And then when there's a pause, we turn to our kids, excuse me, we address our, ch- our kids, and then we get back into the conversation. So parents, there's a little tidbit for you in parenting. But here's Peter, Jesus. He just jumps into the conversation. And he said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, here he's telling Jesus, creating a plan for Jesus, I will put up three shelters, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. I I think for me, again, not getting too theological here, it's very significant, and we need to pause and see who these people are. And and as we look back on Moses' life, and we can see that he had a mountaintop experience. It's where he encountered God. On Mount Sinai, God's mountain had that encounter. God brought uh, Moses into his presence, allowed him to see him, allowed him to feel him. And, and Moses, you know, being, being a man, being overwhelmed by the presence of God. But something happened to Moses. His face shone like glory. His face, his countenance changed as he came down the mountain and he presented himself to the people. People were in awe and they were afraid. And Moses had to veil his face. The glory shone so so bright on Moses' face. And I thought about Elijah. 
And Elijah being the, the man of God he was and, and thinking how, you know, the encounters and the power of God that flowed through him with the mantle of a prophet and how God supernaturally, supernaturally gifted him to do his work came to a point in his life when he encountered all of the false prophets of Baal. And God miraculously showed up, just like when I was a kid on that mountain, and he demonstrated a sign, and all the people were amazed in Elijah's God. God shows up. God shows up in our life in the right season at the right time. See, God is at work. He's always working. I don't know, again, I'm getting so worked up here because I'm thinking there's a bigger picture that we don't see. There's a bigger picture that we fail to see. God is always on the move and he's always working. We're just a little slow sometimes to see it. We're a little slow to capture the, the will of God. We're a little bit slow to come into his will. But as, as Peter is a little slow and he's not seeing, something interesting happens here. Verse 6, when the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Get up. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. I was thinking about the season that we're in and and how can we make an application, Lord, to this passage in this time that we're living in? And so the title of this message that I believe God has inspired me to bring forward to you is Falling Up. Falling Up. You've heard the expression, you fall down, right? You get back up. You fall down and get back up. You know, but I, I was really thinking about how God works, how God works everything together, how he works all things out. And, and the psalm came to me, Psalm 37, 23 through 24. Psalm 37, 23 and 24. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And the, the passage that we just read, the story is God's story and God's consistent in his character as we look back at Psalm 37. When Peter fell and, and the other men, they fell down terrified. Jesus came and he touched them and with two simple words, he said this, get up, get up. And it follows, he followed it. Don't be afraid. Get up. Don't be afraid. Can you, can you see how God works in seasons and in times? And can you see how the, the words of Jesus echo throughout history? And can you see how these words can affect our lives right now? Can come and we can hear these words and it can make an impact on us that when we trust in Jesus right here, right now, facing this little giant called the coronavirus and we can look to him in all of his glory and he's transfigured right before us and we look to him and he says, get up, don't be afraid, get up, don't be afraid. That's the season we're living in, church. We're not to cower away. We're not to shrink back. We're not to fall under a pressure of anxiety and worry and doubt. Oh, am I going to be okay? You're going to be okay. Just trust him. Look to him in all of his glory and all of his splendor, and he will grant you peace. He'll grant you the strength to stand up on your feet. He'll grant you the, the peace to walk through the most terrible time that you could ever face. Listen, God's speaking to me. And I hope he's speaking to you and encouraging you. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. They saw no one except Jesus. This is where we can get really real when we start really looking at our lives right here, right now. What is God doing? Why am I here? Why is the, the nation faced with this, this pandemic, this crisis? Everything that you have done in the past that you have succeeded, everything you've done to, to get you to this point, even, let's, let's do this, even your failures, even your failures, everything from of old, every, every highlight, every low light, okay? Can I tell you this? All that matters right now is right here, 
and right now. Right here, right now. Listen, you, your, your history can be changed right here. Your family history can be changed today. In this moment of history, God has ordained for you to be right here, right now. This is what he's doing. And he's causing us, he's causing us, a lot of us, hmm, he's causing a lot of us to fall down. And I, and I had to pause to say that. I had to pause to say that. Because I, I believe God's in control of everything. I believe God's in control, and, and he, he, knows, he knows what's going on. He knows how we're going to react and how we're going to respond. But going to the other side of that, too, I think with the circumstances, we fall under the pressure of the fear and the worry and the anxiety. We fall down afraid. We fall down afraid. Now, listen, your yesterday's victory is, is, is only going to help you, what? When you see that God helped you out of the situation before. And he's going to use that to increase faith in your life, in your heart, right? That's how we look on the past. But, but all that said, all that done, right here, right now, this is what really matters. What are you going to do with what we're faced with? How are you responding Listen, I'm, I'm feeling inspired to share messages of hope with you, messages that would increase your faith. But, and if you're falling down in fear right now and you're trembling because you're afraid in your natural mind and in the flesh, here's a word for you today. Get up, don't be afraid. Get up, don't be afraid. Now, you gotta think about this one guy we're talking about, about Peter. Peter again, recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. He recognized that, you know, nobody told him, but the, his, the heavenly father, God spoke to him and he touched his heart and recognized Jesus as the Christ. And then he goes and he tries to help Jesus out and tries to orchestrate something here. Don't, don't, don't go to the cross. No, you can't do it that way. Don't do it that way, Jesus. No, 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 you can't die. You can't. And, and, and again, here's Peter Oh, man, if, if you can get this about your own life, I hope you can. He seems to always be failing. He, always, he seems to always be falling. But I like the end of Peter's life, the, the bigger picture, I'd say the latter days to come. Because what, what happened was, even though Peter failed and he fell, okay, the Bible story goes on even more that he was like, I'll never desert you, Jesus. I'll never deny you. And then before the cock crows, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And what did he do? He denied Jesus. Man, he denied him three times. But here's, here's the great thing. We're on this side looking into Peter's life, and we can see. We can see that the grace of God that he offered to Peter, the mercy that he extended, and the love that he extended to Peter. Peter didn't fall down, and he didn't stay down. Peter fell up. He fell up. See, there was a day that, that Jesus knew, Peter, oh boy, you're going you're gonna to fall so low and you're going to really hate your life, Peter. You're going to really hate what you've done. You're going to really feel the impact of, of the denial that you have, have made in front of people. But the bigger picture was this, God's grace, his love, his mercy. And he knew what? That he was going to help Peter up again. He was going to pick him up. So I looked at it this way. Instead of looking at Peter's life falling down and staying down, Peter in Christ was falling up into his grace, into his mercy, into his love. It's a great story. That story's our story. Some of you have failed miserably yesterday, 10 years ago. You made a decision that took you down a road that you wish you not have gone down. But you're standing right there, sitting right where you're at, and you, you're, you're, some of you are down and out, like, man, if I could if I, blah, 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 if I would have only gone to school, if I, if I would have only done something else, I wouldn't be in this situation. Listen, who knows? Maybe God would have pressed you another way. Maybe there would have been another circumstance. But see, what God does is sometimes we, we get into these moments in time where the, it just seems so unbearable, right? It just seems like the, everything's pressing in against us. And God, God, are you sure you're giving me? Can I bear this? Are you sure you want to give me this? I can't bear much more. But God says, yeah, you know what? It's going to seem unbearable, but you got this. You got this. You can do this. You're an overcomer. And, and I started looking at the hand of God guiding our lives, even through our failures. Why? Because he knows what? His word is to get up. Don't be afraid. Fall up. Fall up. Will you keep looking up? 
Will you keep, stop looking down, terrified in the situation, and will you look up? This is a season right now for us to pause and look up. It's a season for us to really look from within and get ourselves up. Some of us are beat down by life, by a, a, a past decision. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. In Christ, get up. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Jesus is standing right with you. All the voices around you, all the circumstantial evidence, whatever you want to call it, everything around you, listen, it's just Jesus. Focus your eyes on Jesus. Whatever you do right now, right here, going forward in your life, it's important that you do this. Keep your eyes on Jesus, only Jesus. The disciples asked him, why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, to be sure Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come and they did not recognize him, but have, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the son of man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. Last week, we talked about prepare the way for Jesus. This is just a tie-in to what I believe God is speaking to us as his people. See, God has a way to lead us into our tomorrow, to lead us into a season where we can see what he's doing and what he's orchestrating, not what we want to do, not how we want it to work out, not, you know, again, the... You know, my will be done, God, and do it this way. No, that's not what he's doing. Just like what we, what we saw Peter in chapter 16 request from Jesus. No, this is a season where we must conform our wills to his. We must lay down our life and take up our own cross and follow him. Listen, I'm being challenged as a pastor. I'm considering all the things we're doing again and how we do church and, and what's the best way to bring people in, to disciple them, to raise them up. It's not about the lights and the cameras, but we're using the platform that we have. Thank God we have that where we can communicate the gospel and the truth to you today. But if you can consider where you're living and how you're living your life and, and everything that you've done, and if you feel like you're falling and you've fallen down, now's not the time to stay down. Now's the time to use this time to isolate yourself, to get alone with God, experience God, and find yourself, what, falling up falling into his arms, looking heavenward, falling into his grace, falling into his mercy, falling into his love. I wanna leave you with three things this morning before we go. How to fall up, how to fall up. We read that scripture, I'll read it again. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. He delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Listen, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what your mindset has been over the last few weeks, God is holding you up with his hand. I wanna leave you with three things. The first one is this, fight on. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna fall up in this season? How are we gonna respond in this season? We're gonna fight on. We're gonna keep keeping the faith. We're not gonna quit. You're faced with physical ailments, physical uh, um. Oh gosh, there's just things that just plague your body. This coronavirus that has attacked people. Listen, have some hope here. Have hope. If, if you're infected, have hope. Listen to me. If you are watching and, 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 and you don't know that you're gonna, how it's gonna come out, what the outcome is, will you place your faith and trust in Jesus and call out to him, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that's spiritual, and I believe that's physical. God will heal you. God will help you overcome in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Keep fighting on. Your struggles are necessary. Your struggles are necessary. Why are my struggles necessary? Listen, it causes us to have to look to him. Every struggle we go through, it puts us in a position where We're either gonna cave in in our misery or we look to him to bring us out. Keep fighting on, that's number one. Fight on, your struggles are necessary. And why are they necessary? It points you to the cross. It points you to Christ. It points you to hope in him. And here's number two, hang on, hang on. You gotta hang on in this season. And this is why, God has not forgotten you. Your father has not forgotten you. 
You know, again, remember that. Dad, 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 mom, 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 mom. Listen, they haven't forgotten you. They're listening to you. You know, I was thinking about when, um, you know, my girls were learning how to walk. I was thinking about how, you know, they were very fragile. And, and, and it was a real trying time for us as first parents when, you know, our, our daughter, our first daughter was learning to take our, her first steps. And think about this. You know, you're, you're moving furniture. You know, you're putting all the sharp objects away and all the risky things that maybe they would injure themselves on. But how many times do our kids fall when they're learning how to walk? How many times did we see them fall? And on almost those near falls, we're like, oh, and you can't get there fast enough, right? And they fall, but at the end, what is it? They're okay. They're okay. You know, kids know how to fall. Do you know that? Isn't that weird? They, they, they have this innate built thing, and you'll see them, and they're learning how to walk. And it's sometimes, and again, not all the time, because as parents were like, ah, oh, we almost got there, but we didn't, we didn't catch it, and smack, they hit their face. But there are times when, when they're learning how to walk, they just sit back down. They just sit back down on their bottom. You know, they're, they're, they're learning their center of gravity, and a lot of times they're just going right back down to, to a sitting position. And, and this is something that I believe God uses natural things to teach us. See, there are things that, that we do sometimes that we, we're, we're just learning to take baby steps. We're just learning to get out there in the Lord, and something happens, and a big tragedy like we're facing today happens, and we don't know how to respond, and boom, we fall down, right? We sit down, we shrink back. But in that time, guess what happens? You get more courage. You get more strength. You get built up and you get edified. And what? Then the next thing comes. And think about, again, that little baby trying to take their first step. It's in them, right? What do they do if they fall down? They're trying again. They want to get back up. They want to keep, keep walking. You know, I think there are, there are times and, and, and seasons in our life that we stay seated a little bit too long. But if it's for a season, I, I want to encourage you this. If you just feel like there's just this time that you're in and that you just need to pause and just sit down, take that moment. I want, I want to encourage you this. Will you hang on, though? Because your father has not forgotten you. Now, you might feel beat down by guilt, by shame, by something you've done. Will you open up your Bible? And will you read that his love is so unconditional for you, his agape love, that, that as far as the east is from the west, he, for, he forgives you of your sin. He washes your sin white as snow. Will, will you get into that mindset and know that God is with you and just keep holding on to your faith? Don't quit. The last one is this. Number three, you gotta keep walking on. Keep walking on. Keep walking on. Why? Because your future is secure in him. Your future is secure in him. Forget about all the stuff out there that you're hearing. Just focus on him. He's the only one standing, not yesterday, but now, right here, right now. And guess what he does? He does put a hope in you to keep getting up the next day and the next day and the next day. How many of you have heard reports of people that have been infected with this tiny little virus, this coronavirus? Some of you have friends of friends of friends. Some of you are just watching the news and they hear of all the devastation that's going on around the world. And now here in America, we're the epicenter for the, number, <clears throat> the highest number of positive cases in the world. Again, our population's large as well. We understand those statistics. But, but think about the devastation that it can cause people right now, right here, all over the world. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? And how are you handling this? Can I encourage you this morning? You're gonna walk on. You're gonna walk on. You're not gonna shrink back. This is not the time to shrink back. Remember, we're fighting on, we're hanging on, and we're gonna walk on. We're gonna keep walking. Now, I understand there's people who are compromised. There are people who are in their homes and they're, they're put in situations maybe where they work that you have to be very careful. But will you walk in faith? Will you keep the word of the Lord in your heart so that when you do have to get up and move on and do something forward in your day that you'll have the strength and the courage to do so. And I want you to know that if you go into a place of work like a hospital or a setting where a clinic, that, that God's watching out for you. You're covered by the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus over your life. These are some of the things that I believe that as we have to live our day that we have to, again, call on the word of the Lord and, and call our 
our flesh, our soul, our mind into order and say, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Get up, go to work, keep walking on. Your future is secure in him. Listen, if he intends for this little virus to wipe out your life, we don't know what's going to take our life. You could be a car as you cross the street. We don't know. But you just have to maintain faith. You have to keep walking things out. And don't let this little tiny virus scare you from doing what you know to do in Jesus, right? Some of you need to call a friend. Get on the phone. Zoom call them. Do what you can to help encourage faith in other people. That's, that's what we're dealt. That's how we're going to do it. We're not going to let this stop us. I believe that this is a season where we really need to consider, again, our faith in our, our hearts and where we're living. And everyone, again, remember, remember this. They have an experience. Everyone has an experience. And this experience, I was thinking about our kids. Like, man, they're, getting, they're growing up with this, this tragic thing in history. You know, uh, we have a daughter who's going to be graduating um, this year, and she is going to graduate. But the, the whole, like, pomp and circumstance, it's not going to happen the way that we thought it was going to happen. You know, there are just different people out there that, that are feeling just like they've been cheated and robbed. And, and you know, why me? And like, listen, can I encourage all the high school seniors right here? Everybody here, can I encourage you? Listen, you're just going to keep walking on. You're going to keep doing what you're called to do. And this isn't going to stop you from making an impact in your future. Listen, this is just a little moment in time, a drop in a bucket, a little grain of sand. And God is encouraging you, let this Fuel you. Let it fuel the fire in you because I see it this way. When God challenges a generation with a, a major crisis and he allows it to come, come into their life, he's getting them ready, what? For something great, for something better, for something powerful to come. So seniors, get ready. You're chosen. You're chosen. God has chosen you. Rise up. Faith arise. Come on, you gotta fight on. You gotta hang on. You gotta keep walking on. Are you encouraged? I hope you are. Nod your heads out there. Yes, I see the camera moving up and down. No, you guys, be encouraged. Don't feel like you are, your life is over. Your future is secure in him. Your future is assured in him. Wow. I think sometimes whenever we preach and teach, some things are inspired. But I feel the inspiration right now of encouragement, of hope, of faith, not fear, not devastation, uh, not destruction. Those of you, again, right here, right now, that are faced with the trial, God is speaking to you. God is going to use this. He's molding you and he's shaping you, and your future is bright. Amen. Will you bow your heads this morning as we pray? Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that we can come to the homes of our friends, our family, and Lord, all over the city, all over the world. I believe the message is being shared just as we've shared this morning. But Lord, something that I don't want to neglect in this time, in this passage, is the transfiguration, your transfiguration, Lord, that you went from this side of heaven to the other side. And Lord, we, we were allowed to see this through the eyes of the disciples, the transfiguration, this metamorphosis that you underwent. And Lord, I, I say this, the reason that you allowed human eyes to see it is because you're speaking beyond that personal experience. The reason that I was allowed to see that miracle on that mountain of the fire swelling up at the ask of my uncle was, Lord, because you were making an impact in my life. You were showing me that you were real. And God, out of heaven, you spoke, this is my son. Listen, <laughs> listen to him. And Lord, just... As the disciples heard that, Lord, you spoke. Lord, you spoke clearly. I'm saying this, Father, you spoke clearly of who Jesus was. And Lord, this morning, we want to capture who Jesus is to us. He's our master. He's our savior. He's our deliverer. He's our ever-present help in time of trouble. And this morning, we need you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for reminding us who your son was. Thank you for speaking it into existence again. This is the second time I'm re recalling now that whenever Jesus started his ministry and then on the Mount of Transfiguration, out of the mouth of God, you were speaking, Lord. You were speaking, this is my son whom I love. 
With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. So Lord, this morning, we're inclining our ears to hear what you're speaking to us. We wanna hear, Holy Spirit, the voice of God for our life. And Lord, as we go through this difficult time, we're praying that you lift us up, that we fall up into your arms, into your glory, into your presence. And this morning, I pray, if anybody is out here listening this morning and they're feeling still beat down and worried and, and God just stuck, lift them up, Lord. Come on, right now, be in your homes. Just begin to pray. Just begin to ask the Lord for strength. Begin to ask him to fill your, your heart with courage. Will you see the glory of God in who he is? And now, Lord, will you shine your glory on your people? Will you th allow them to see your glory? Will you allow them to experience your glory? Will you allow them to come into your presence, God, and get up and stand up, not in fear, but in faith this morning, God, let the church arise. Let the church stand, I pray in Jesus' name. Now listen, if you're here, if you're listening this morning and, and you've heard something for the first time and you're encouraged, I wanna, I wanna encourage you in this, that you can have a personal relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, right? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and we believe as Christians that, that Jesus gave his all, his everything, his life in exchange for my guilt and my pain and my shame and everything that I am deserving of. He stepped in and he took it upon himself. Listen, that's for you if you're listening this morning, if you're feeling like you've done something that's unforgivable, if you've done something that, that you're ashamed of, Jesus loves you and he forgives you. He poured out his life on Calvary's cross and he died a death a willing death, a sacrificial death so that you wouldn't have to die. And he brings you into his family, into his life, which we call the abundant life in Christ. The Bible says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, they will not perish, but have everlasting life. Our faith is secure in Christ right now, that no matter what the outcome is around us, that we will be secure in our hope and we'll be with him if we were to die or if we are to leave this earth, we're gonna be with him. You can have that same assurance this morning. I wanna lead you in a prayer. I want you to really just contemplate again where you're at. And if you call out to him, he's gonna help you. Let's bow our heads one more time. Say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, open wide the door of my heart and I ask you to come in. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me of all my sins and wipe away my past. I turn my back on the world and I turn my back on sin and I turn my back on the devil and demon forces. Will you embrace me, Jesus? Will you give me a new heart and a new start? And Lord, fill me. Fill me with power. Power to overcome by your Holy Spirit and allow my life to be a living testimony to your goodness at work today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, just write in the comments down there or you can send us an email at info at info at nhfcselma.com. We'll respond to you. We'll let you know. Uh, we'll we'll uh, encourage you in the Lord. And uh, just once we're back together, come and say hi. We'd love to meet you and greet you. Listen, this is not a time to shrink back. It's a time, what, to fall up into his arms. If you failed, you fell right into his arms, amen? Don't forget that, he loves you. I wanna say a blessing over you before we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name, amen.